Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Omar and today we're going to be creating this crystal material inside of Houdini 20.5. It's going to be a walkthrough. It's not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. So I'm just warning you guys uh, beforehand and let's see what we're going to be creating. Thank you for bearing through the short film that I created for Kitbash 3D. This is roughly what we're going to be creating. I'm just going to be showing you how to create the material inside of Copernicus or COPS. Let's get started. We're going to start off by creating the larger cracks that you see over here. And then we're going to progress on to creating the secondary cracks. And then we're going to do the surface details. Let's get started. We're going to start with whirly noise. I went with an element size of 0.5 and I upped the jitter. And then I used the UV map by ID. I used the ID output from the whirly noise. I plugged it in and then I used a UVX transform. I went with a uniform scale of 0.5 and a rotation of 160. And the reason why I did this is because I want each cell to have a ramp which is uh, pointing to a different direction. That's why I used this UVX transform and I rotated it like that. After that, I used a distort node using a fractal noise as its uh, scale uh, input, but alternatively, you can also change the signature to a UV and plug this into a direction. After this, I want the cracks to have uh, variations in height. For that reason, I created a random mono node and I used the seed input for the ID from the whirly noise. I went with a different seed. This is also arbitrary. I distorted it as well. And then I multiplied it. And voila, we have cells with different uh, value spectrums. Moving on, before we do the secondary details, I would like to create a mask whereby I'm going to be including the secondary details. So I'm going to do the uh, secondary cracks mask. I use the edge detect node here. And then I use the dilate erode after this. This is so that I have more space to include the secondary cracks. And then I use the multiply node with a fractal noise. I up the roughness on this uh, fractal noise so that it has this grungy texture. And then I moved on to the secondary cracks. I use the whirly noise as well for this one. Uh, this whole section is very similar to the primary crack section. I use the UV map by ID here. Use the UVX transform after that, and then image sampled it with a ramp. And I have cells with different pointing directions of ramps here. And then I distorted it as well, similar to what, what, what I have at the top. And then I multiplied it with a run, random mono as well here, so that there's a, a variation in height and I multiplied it and here's what I have and then I multiplied this using a max blend node I use the uh, secondary cracks mask in the mask input the primary cracks in the background and then the secondary ones in the foreground and this is what I have let's move on to creating the, the smaller very smallest details I'm going to be using the whirly noise as well. I went with an element size of 0.1. You have to make this smaller because uh, th this is going to be the very smallest details. I distorted it with a fractal noise. And then since this is an SDF, we would like to convert it to a mono, which is a float. I use this SDF to mono. And for this, I have two sections. Uh, I would like to create one larger cracks that you see here, and then I would like to transform them into smaller cracks and then combine them together. For the smaller ones, I use a transform 2D node and I made the, I lowered the uniform scale. Then I remapped it so that it's not as intense. And for the bottom portion, I just used a dilator road so that it has some sort of like a glow to, the, to its edges. This is also arbitrary, may be used or may not be used. It's up to your uh, creative or artistic eye. 
I use the re re remap node after this, and then I use the ma maximum node to combine them together like this. So you have the bigger cracks and the smaller ones. And then I multiplied it with a fractal noise so that you have some variations and where they appear. I remapped this as well, so they're a bit more prominent. And yes, uh, moving on to the color generation, this is where our uh, tertiary details are gonna come in handy. For the color generation, I use the combination of the primary and secondary cracks, and then I subtracted the sum of this with the tertiary detail. So at the end, what I have is this. And then I use the height to amb ambient occlusion. This is the most commonly used node as per most of the tutorials that you see on YouTube. Uh, this creates a good range for you, for you to be able to uh, create color variations. And then I multiplied this with a fractal noise just to give it some variation. And then I use the Mono 2 RGB node to get the color. I went with a bluish to purplish color scale with the darkest point being almost black. This is also arbitrary. You might want to go with a different colored crack for your case. So I'm going to be including the project file in the description. You can also change this ramp as you wish. So this is our crystal color. And we'll be using it in the material section. As per the displacement, I use the same output from the color generation, but I multiplied it with a fractal noise. So it's not much different. Then I made a null, named it crystal displace. For the emission generation, I used the output of the combination of primary and secondary cracks. And I multiplied it with a fractal noise so that I have this. And for the fractal noise, I went with a contrast of 0.69, amplitude of 1.9. These are also arbitrary, can be changed. No need to worry about the exact numbers. I remapped it. And then I used an add node with the edge detect on the bottom portion. So this was, I wanted to give a glow on the edges so that it has the, the this fantasy look as you can see, and I added them together. It has this smooth look. And then I maxed it out with our tertiary details, the smaller cracks. So this is the emission. And we're gonna be also touching upon the rendering of the material itself. And let's get going. Okay, here is how the final render looks like. I have my cop net inside of a lop net that we're going to be using to render this. We're going to first start off by creating a sop create node. And this is the geometry that, that I created for the crystal itself. It's basically a bunch of points scattered inside a tube with an ISO offset. And I uh, scattered some few points into this. And then I randomized their P scale. And then I randomized their normals so that they're pointing in different directions. Uh, I use the distribution of an inside of a sphere inside the attribute randomize. And then I use the tube for the crystal itself. And I fuse the top portions. And then I use an auto UV so that each crystal has a UV attribute on them. I transform them. And then I copy to points like this. Here is our basic crystal geometry. You can do more operations to make it look better, but for this scenario, it's gonna be enough. Okay, let's get out and let's show you the, the material itself. So for the material, and for this, let me just put a dark background. So it's easier to see. I use the Material X tiled image and I put the null that we created, the base color null that we created inside the material generation, inside of COPS. I copied the, the path itself and then I added OP and a colon 
at the start of the path so that it reads it properly. And then I added the emission itself. I plugged the emission to the emission value here. I plugged the base color into the base color and the emission color. And I plugged the displacement into the displacement. And then I went with a displacement of 0.1. And then for the emission itself, I made sure the, the highest remap value is set to 13 so that uh, you get more emission. And here's what I mean by that. If you set it to one, you're going to get a low emission value and you're not, it's not going to look that great. If you set it to, let's say 11 or 13 for this case, it, it gives you that, you know, that glowy look. As for the standard surface, material like standard surface, the index of refraction was set to 1.5. Uh, the roughness was sent, set to 0 0.055 and metalness was set to 0.304. You can also copy the transmission settings, uh, anisotropy and roughness here as well. As I said, I'll be providing the project file, so you don't have to worry about following each value dot for dot. I added a Karma Physical Sky just for a slight detail. And then I uh, created a Karma render settings, just a regular one with the XVU parameters set to 128. As for the refraction itself, if I set this to zero, let's see how this looks, with the zero. Ideally you wanna, yeah, you see you're not getting any refraction inside the crystal. So you, the more you crank up this, this value, the better results you're gonna get. Let's go with 10. Yeah, you're getting more refraction, more smoother, uh, bouncing of light inside of the crystal, You're not getting any more artifacts. And here's what we have. Uh, guys, this was my first tutorial. I apologize for the fillers, the ums, the unnecessary words that I used throughout this tutorial. I hope to get better with each tutorial, but if you have liked this, please give me a thumbs up and, and subscribe to my channel so that I can keep creating this content. I will also be providing the project file inside the description. Thank you so much. Have a good one.